Welcome to another episode of Australian Muscle Chats with. This episode is brought to you by Australian Muscle and Australian Muscle The Gym. Check us out on australiamuscle.com.au and all our social media platforms. In this episode, I get to chat with a very good friend of mine, Tony Tocasio. I've known Tony for 20 years now through my association with Max's Supplements, where Tony works as their Victorian and South Australian rep. However, there is more to Tony than just a sales rep. Tony has had a colourful life from a teenage kickboxing champion, bodybuilding champion and powerlifting record holder. We talk about his boxing career and one of the biggest comebacks in Australian history to his current pursuit to dominate the powerlifting scene. At 53 years old, Tony is still pursuing his relentless passions for the fitness industry while maintaining a balance for family and friends. I really enjoyed chatting with Tony, who has inspired me, and I hope you enjoy it too. All right, welcome to episode four of Australian Muscle Chats 2. This week, I have a very interesting um, interesting person I'm talking to, uh, someone who I'm proud to call a good friend of mine that I've known for a very long time through our business uh, with Australian Muscle. Uh, he's a person that most of you most probably don't know who he is. If you're if you're not in the supplement industry, you most probably wouldn't know. But if you're in the fight game, you most probably do know or have heard of this person. So without any ado, I'd like to welcome Tony Tocasio to the podcast. <laughs> How are you, Tony? I'm great, Kim. Thank you for having me on your show. I'm, I'm feeling uh, very honoured to be asked to share my story because um, <laughs> It's uh, yeah, it's great. It's a great. It's great. It'll be great to share it. So let's have a chat. And, yeah, no, no, it'd be really interesting. We just had a really nice breakfast. We're here on the foreshore of Glenelg, looking over the ocean. It's a beautiful view. A bit of a gloomy, overcast day this morning. But before we start and get really into the nitty gritty, just tell us a little bit about yourself, Tony. Um, just what you do now. Um, the reason why I know you. Yep. You know, um, and we'll go from there. Okay. Uh, our association is well, commenced a good 20 years ago. Well, I've been in the supplement industry for quite a few years, over 30 years, and I represent the brand Max's and Maxine's Burn. I'm the state sales manager and I look after South Australia. I've been in the company for 26 years. I've got a very strong bond with uh, the owners of the company and uh, as a team, we're, we work as a great team. And Kim and I have been working together for the last 20 years. Well, that's right, yeah. So uh, I've been, Australian Muscle is going into its 23rd year, so we've been working together in all that time. Yep. Um, tell us a little bit about how you got associated with Max's. I just listened just recently to a podcast with Paul yep. and Keith, who are the owners of Max's, and they talked about the original Max's, and they talked about how you started with them. Yep. So how did you actually get involved in the supplement industry? Okay, I, I was approached by Keith Ellis, the CEO of the company, many years ago. We, uh, we, we, had, a, we had a chat, just a chance meeting. We had a, we had a chat and he was telling me his plans of, of growing a business, uh, growing his business, and I was very intrigued at the time. And <clears throat> we sat down, had a coffee, and I, I got along with Keith from day one. We, got along, we, we just clicked, we got along really well. I liked his ideas. I liked, did you know Keith before this? I, like I knew of Keith from his bodybuilding background. He was, yep. he was very well known at the time. Yeah, so back then the, Keith was a champion, he was an body, Australian, Australian champion Australian bodybuilder. Australian champion bodybuilder, yeah, yep. that's right. Yeah, very well known. And a few of my friends would know him in the security industry knew of Keith as well. He worked in security as well. So he had a very good reputation and a uh, real genuine, beautiful, uh, nice person. So we, we, we clicked very well. I, I joined the team in 1992. So it was, wasn't much of a team. It was only Keith Ellis, <laughs> Paul Kirkham, and myself, the three of us. And my role was to... I, I, I'd already known quite a few of the retailers. I've been in the industry for a few years, so I was to get out, introduce myself and introduce the products. And slowly, slowly, we've built a pretty strong, a pretty strong business now. We've um, been going for like the company's been going for like 28, 29 years. That's right. I've, yeah, I've been in the company 26 years now, and uh, I, I don't call it a job. I still enjoy what I do. I, I mean, every day I'm out um, meeting people and trying to improve their health and. Um, yeah, so, yep. so it's, it's it's a great industry to be in in that sense. So if I don't, I'm enjoying what I still enjoy what I do. So yes, mm. no, that's excellent. Mm. Um, all right, well, let's get into the reason for our podcast. Is you've got a a, um, a very interesting background in fighting. So um, yeah. what sort of fighting? You, 
Is it like is okay. it you know we we talk about boxing and fighting, but it's yeah. actually is it kickboxing? What yeah, what I, is the discipline that you uh, were in? Yeah, I started as a young seventeen year old doing some martial arts under the um, the Zen Du Kai Martial Arts Academy, which was un, run by Bob Jones, Bob Jones himself, and um, that led to kickboxing. I was um, I, I achieved the rank of brown belt, black Q, and I was more interested in being a kickboxer because at the time. Uh, yeah, that's what, uh, that, that was that was the real stuff for me. That was that was the real, <laughs> the real. Yeah. yeah. So um, slowly, I what happened there was I introduced myself to I, I, I saw a gentleman by the name of Paul Fifield training. This is and I walked up and introduced myself to him. At, at the time, he was tr- in training to fight for the he was he was fighting the American U.S. champion, a guy by the name of Mark Costello. It was back in 1983, and. Um, no Australian fighter had ever had any success fighting an, fighting an, an international opponent. And I uh, remember his preparation, I was in awe of... Anyway, he, when he came back, uh, he, he beat the American champion. He became our first ever Australian fighter to beat an overseas opponent. And when he came back, I was um, we, we got talking. I asked him, I'd, I'd love to one day have a kickboxing fight. Would you train me? Would you look at me? And, um, he how, me, how old were you then? I would have been... 17, 18. All right, so, yeah. so I was still yep. in karate, yeah. So I looked up to him and um, he took me under his wing and I'm, I'm very proud to say I was his protege, I guess, and we, the way we went, my goal was to one day have this one kickboxing fight. You know? So I was full, when we're talking kickboxing, we're talking full contact. You know, you actually, <laughs> you can yeah. get hurt, stuff everybody. And back then it was, you had to do a minimum of eight kicks per round. And uh, if you don't get oh, up... Oh, so, so there was actually, like, you, yeah, you had to kick a certain minimum yeah. time. And so per round, yeah. if, you didn't, if you didn't score eight kicks per round, you actually get penalised. So you had to yeah. do a lot of kicks. But the, the idea of the game was to outscore your opponent. Obviously, knockout is, is the ultimate win. Um, so one, 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 one fight down, we won. Second fight down, one. Three fights down. We got up to six fights, and we, we challenged for a Victorian amateur title. And... Um, that was a, and that we put it together, and so I actually retired. I think it was I had a, yeah. So it was six straight fights. It was correct. Yeah, six straight fights. I won a Victorian amateur title, and I was happy as. And I and I thought maybe it's, I thought I'd have a break, and I started pushing weights around, doing some bodybuilding, and um, I got I got an interest into bodybuilding at the time. So I sort of gave the fighting a bit of a rest for close to a year, I think it was. So these six fights were over how long a time period? That was probably over. 18 months yeah over 18 so you months. were still a teenager i was still a teenager yeah yeah so i had yeah so i had six six amateur fights won a, a state title i was happy as so I started this bodybuilding journey a little bit of bodybuilding which i was enjoying but it wasn't as satisfying for me as as, as the fight games i knew I, there was going to be a time where i'd want to challenge myself again and go back in the ring and so everything so what happened there was i remember it was about 1988 i said okay that's it we, we made a call i said that's the time to get back in so we we trained for a bit of a comeback fight hadn't so and i remember training so much i really wanted to do so well because once you, once you've won six straight fights you kind of expected to continue winning mm. <laughs> so, and i don't like to lose i'm very competitive nature and i remember this particular time and i was i was carrying a bit of extra um muscle weight because of the bodybuilding so Remember the, the agreed weight for the fight, I had to be at 72 kilo at this particular time. I remember the morning of the weigh-in, I panicked, I was at two kilo overweight. My trainer would tell me to relax, it'll come off during the day, just don't, don't do anything stupid, blah, blah. What did I do? I, I listened to a friend, of, a good friend of mine who's a very well-known, I won't mention his name, he's a great bodybuilder, good friend of mine. He gave me some advice and he said, Tony, easy, I'll give you a couple, just take a couple of these, mod diuretics, you'll be fine, man. It's only two kilo, you'll be, you'll be fine. So... I, I took his advice. I took these mod diuretics. First time ever I, I'd ever taken anything I didn't understand. So it really had a bad effect on me. It, honestly, it, I just remember how much I urinated. I never urinated so much in my life. I still remember clearly. <laughs> like from the from the morning to, to the evening, I, th- I was I was I began urine probably later in the afternoon. It all started. I probably dro- I was probably six kilo less than I was. I was ex- I was expecting to come in at about seventy. Th- 2.5 that was the limit I, I, I waited in something like six, ridiculous like 66.5 it was that was during the course of the day that was during so the course, the course of, the of the day, day yeah. you shed I, six odd kilos of fluid yeah and i obviously i, I was paranoid so i wouldn't eat anything i was I, my, I didn't have the knowledge of understanding how to, how to how the weight my, my trainer said me relax you've done all the hard work just relax here you'll be fine and we'll have a good feed after because because the weighing was the night before we had we had a full day to mm. eat up so we had no, yeah. no, don't panic relax <laughs> <laughs> 
So, and I remember how much it really had affected me. And fight time, I remember fight time, warming up in the change room, it just didn't feel right. And it just wasn't, I'm normally an aggressive, strong person. I've always manhandled my opponents. And I remember just not, I was kicking the pads, the shin pads, and it just didn't feel right. Anyway, I went out there as always. I gave my absolute best, as I always do. And we lost this points decision. And I still remember this coming. <laughs> I was so I was heart I was it was heart wrenching for me. I was for me to actually lose my first fight after, yeah. It was it, was, it really took it. It really affected me. I remember I walked into the change room. I had my head down. I was felt so bad. Then the first thing I had to do, one of my cornermen had to help me take my pants. Take, take, I had a, we wear a groin guard in, in mm. the fight game, so we don't get yep. in the groin. I, was, I just had to urinate. I just kept urinating, and it's, it really affected me so much. And I. When I explained to my trainer what I what I'd done by taking these diuretics, my God, did I cop a spray? He actually got stuck into me, and, and I learned a lot from that. It was a very valuable lesson because. Did you go the distance in the fight? Yeah, yeah, we went the yeah, distance. Yeah. I, I, so I, you got you lost on a. I lost points. on a points decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was on a points decision. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have lost. You know, I, I believe I was. Anyway, it's a fight game. You don't always it doesn't always go your way. You know? But um, I was proud. I gave my best as I always do, and fortunately, um, I just wasn't my hundred percent. So and my trainer had a good chat to me about the difference between performance sports as opposed to bodybuilding competition. It's just, you know, you should, yeah. And uh, from that day onwards, I took it upon myself. I'm, I'm going to be accountable from now on. So I, I started researching about nutrition, supplementation. That's why I'm so passionate where I am today. I'm still doing what I'm doing regarding supplements. But I really want to understand whatever goes into my body from now on. I need, to, yeah. I would never do that so silly that again because that really cost me. Yeah. So, Anyway, back back to the fight game. We started winning a few more fights, and then my trainer went overseas on an overseas holiday, and I and then I hooked up with a boxing trainer. And I was if you brought if you brought up in Melbourne back in the nineteen eighties, it was the Lester Alice camp. Lester Alice was a famous world champion kickbox world champion boxer. Sorry, he was a world champion boxer, and I was part of the I, I trained under their camp, and I had two professional fights in the boxing game, which I really enjoyed. I had a great time, but my passion was was always to go back to kickboxing. So those two fights were good. My first fight I remember was out in, it's quite funny though, it was out in Mildura, which is regional Victoria. And um, I didn't know a single person in the crowd. I remember we, <laughs> I, got, I, I scored a knockout in round two and I was so happy. This was my first win in nearly four years or something since I last had a win. And I was, yeah. I've jumped on the ropes, pounding my chest, <laughs> not, not knowing a single person. <laughs> <laughs> was, I was just so elated to be yeah, finally get a, back on the winning track again, and um, so there then it went on. We went another boxing fight, then back to kickboxing, and we challenged. Yeah, my trainer and I we we challenged for Australian titles in over the course we got three different weight classes. So fourth. yeah, and um, my most memorable Australian title fight. I'd, I'd like to share this because it's something I still remember clearly. I. I was a fill-in. A good friend of mine was meant to fight for an Australian title. He got injured. It was ten days to go. The promotion was going to was going to collapse if, if somebody didn't put their hand up. What a great opportunity I thought for myself and my trainer. He he wasn't um, he was umming narrow about it because who was your trainer? Sorry, my trainer's his name is Paul Fifield. He's yep. he's a gentleman who was the first Australian fighter ever to beat an overseas opponent. He became he was my coach, best mate, and also looked after some other. Uh, Big names, Australian, some of Australia's best kickboxers, such yep. as Sam Greco, Stan, um, Tosca Petridis, Bill Kanoska, and he's helped a few helped over the years. But um, so we challenged for different weight classes. But this particular fight in Perth, I remember, was for the Australian super middleweight title, which is two weight classes above my normal, my natural weight. So I was giving away weights, but to me, what an opportunity! So it was over eight rounds for the Australian title. It was a professional fight where you had to. Kick where you're allowed to kick to the legs, not, not above the waist. It was actually a leg kick fight, a professional fight. So we we had nothing to lose. Well, my attitude was, I've got nothing to lose here. I'm gonna. And I, I remember coming out and and everybody just booed me on the way out. And it was my best. I, to this day, I I lost the fight by I was actually knocked out in the last round. So I was TKO knockout in round eight. But up until then, it was quite an entertaining fight. It was so much that Bob Jones, who ran kickboxing in Victoria or Australia for, for many, many years, he voted it, it was the best fight of the fight of the year, 1988. And uh, what can I say? One thing I do remember was, um, this is quite clear, it's, it might seem strange me explaining this, but I remember at the end of round seven, uh, there was a $1,000 bonus coming in. Had If any fighter 
uh, wins by knockout was it was a thousand dollar bonus back in 1988 thousand dollars goes a long, we go yeah. a long, a long yeah. way and I remember I I bullied my opponent in the corner and I and I just let him go and I, and I remember I seen a I noticed a cut above his eye and I'm thinking I'm, I'm, I'm I've got him I've got him I've got him I've got him. <laughs> the bell went came out for the for the eighth and final round and I got caught with a big uppercut and all I remember was I was the, the referee was looking in my eyes and, and I was getting a count and I'm thinking oh my god I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get counted out here I I, I looked around and I said oh I'm not I'm, I'm in you know, it came to my senses I'm away from my fighting away from home they're gonna they're gonna count me out here if I don't do something <laughs> and I looked at, I looked I looked at him and I said I'm fine 100 percent let me go let me go and I remember it was what I thought <laughs> I remember charging like a madman because I'm gonna make this happen and how wrong was I the actual when we when we watch the video later what when I thought I charged at it I actually my, my, I was actually semi-concussed at the time yeah. I actually walked out like like, like you picture a drunk person walking That's like right, with yeah. heavy legs and I just ran into about another half a dozen straight right hands yeah. <laughs> oh, lucky the ropes were there the ropes was actually hang, I was hanging onto the ropes and I, I had enough I was actually I was very badly hurt my opponent, the champion, he actually collapsed out of exhaustion. He got his arm raised. It was quite a bizarre ending. But, he got uh, tired beating you up. Yeah, he got tired <laughs> beating me up. Yeah. So, uh, but everyone, I remember the applause I got on the way and on walking on the way out it was very different to walking in. I was actually booed, yeah. <laughs> Victorian fighting in WA. But on the way out, we, as a team, and I, had, I was so proud. I had my trainer beside me. We also had the experience of another great trainer named Dave Hitchcock who was in my corner as well so I had a great experience in my corner and uh, yeah I was very proud I, mean, I made my team proud and uh, yeah it just elevated me as a person as, as a person that realized if you really put your mind to something you nearly, I nearly pulled off a big upset oh that would have been a big yeah. <laughs> if somebody was, if you were a betting man you wouldn't have put money on that that was <laughs> it was huge so so that was a good me- um, memory I may not have won but I yeah may have not have got this decision but or the victory but um, I did in my own way you know? so, yeah yeah I watched a number of your fights on YouTube like okay. if, you, if you google your name that a lot of fights come up okay. some of the early ones um, you were sort of renowned as the pretty boy yep. yeah, yeah, yeah you had you had um, actually blonde hair dyed blonde hair dyed blonde and hair. you had a pretty good mullet going and everything <laughs> but every every fight the I can you know the the commentator would talk about your physique and he looks magnificent and yeah. you were always renowned for this really chiseled body and you were you yeah. know like you had compared to a lot of the other fighters who were all lean yeah. but you you had a big six pack was was that something that you had to work on or is, or is it a genetic thing with you that you're able to stay lean you're still lean yeah. now you're in your fifties and, yeah. and and you're really lean um, but even back then you know was that something that you just you were like that, or yeah, did you no, really fr- train? Or the training contributed to it? I'm yeah. sure the training contributed. Yeah, to it. Well, from a young age, I was always fascinated with a good body, and yeah. a six pack is something. From a young, from a young age, I've always wanted. To, I, was, I remember doing sit ups when I was a young kid, and I used to count my sit ups and write them on a piece of paper and try and beat my score every time. Yeah. <laughs> I had little obstacles in my backyard, do chin ups, try and beat my record. How many chin ups I can do? How many skips I can do? Well, that's, that's the yeah. classic thing yeah. that we talk about now. That in training you should do apply progressive overload. And you were Correct. doing that back then. I was doing it back then. Yeah, yeah. On, my, on my own, it was just this exactly little, right. little exercise book, and I'd write. You know, yeah. <laughs> today I did so many skips uninterrupted, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. missing one up, or how many chin ups I would do, push ups. Yeah, and uh, but sit ups was one. I remember once I did so many sit ups, I got a callus on my. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was on the wrong carpet, but you live and learn. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But you now tra- I've always been a big believer in yeah in, in weight training, incorporating weight training, and yeah, and as for my physique, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of the main, still maintaining it and. Uh, yeah. Up to yeah, I mean my yeah, I mean my fifties, sure, and I have to inspire others that yeah, if you look after yourself, it's yeah. it's very rewarding. We'll go on to that a little bit more. Yeah. Tell yeah. us about another fight that I heard. You were in one fight and um there was something to do with the ring was so hot or something and oh, and okay. you yeah, ended yeah. up um with absolutely no skin on your feet. You feet, still yeah. you still finished the fight and everything and it yep. wasn't until the end of the fight yep. you were in shock and you realised that your feet like yeah. what happened there? What yeah. Well, how, what causes you to lose the skin off the bottom of your feet? Yeah, that that was quite bizarre because we trained bare f- barefoot. And That's we, right. We, yeah, we, we just trained bare feet, but I, I was like the main the last fight of the night. I think it was second last fight of the night, so the ring must have got very hot. My fight went the whole distance. I think it was an eight or a ten rounder, and yeah, I just really I, all I remember was my, my trainer telling me, "Around, he goes, what's going on with your feet?" Like you know, and I, and I my adrenaline was so pumped. I I didn't realize how, how serious it was, but. I had to get rushed to the hospital straight after. By the way, I mean, we finished the fight. I mean, it was a great moment. I won an Australian title. You won the fight? Won the fight, yeah. yeah. Was Australian title in the middleweight division. 
at this time and we got rushed to hospital and all, basically all my skin was ripped off my, the soles of my feet and um and that was caused what by a, a just, hot ring just by the ring itself yeah hot really ring, yeah so what was it like a technically a burn technically a burn yeah my, my trainer said i, I mean that interview on that muscle tv show but my trainer comments that he made a mistake thinking not oh, the best thing to do is just put him put his put his feet in the, in the ice bucket you know it'd be fine yeah. it actually made it worse but uh we yeah he openly admitted goes oh, it's just a mistake on my behalf <laughs> but, <laughs> but having said that like we didn't know and uh it didn't really matter like i don't think any fighter would have really noticed that if, if if your intentions are to win like you all those little incidentals go out the window you know you just think yeah. about what, what you're there for and i was there to, i was there to give my best and concentrate on the fight and uh that's I'd rather have uh, burnt feet than uh, yeah. <laughs> than a banged up head. <laughs> so, yeah. so just the way it went, yeah, that's yeah. fine. Yeah. You mentioned you you did a, a foray into bodybuilding after your first few fights. Yeah, when I was after those. So how was that? Yeah, those amateur fights. Uh, I had those six amateur fights, and then I got involved in bodybuilding. I actually competed. Not many people might know this, but I actually competed in a bodybuilding show once. <laughs> which, fe- which federation? It wasn't a federation. It was called. It was back back in Melbourne. It was called the Battle of the Gyms. They had like eight different okay. gyms in the northern yeah. suburbs. All got together. Yeah. I actually had. I, I had this. I had. This is nineteen eighty seven. I had sixteen people in my lineup. Yeah, sixteen. <laughs> well, think, that's like I competed in. That's ironic because my first show was in nineteen eighty seven. Eighty seven. Yeah, yeah. And I can remember going to the contest, and then they had the contest registration, and they called up men's novice because I'm going. Oh, well, there's a few guys here, mm-hmm. and they called up men's novice, and everyone stood up. Mm-hmm. There was like 19 guys, and I'm going. You yeah, had to pick the day when there's the biggest field ever. So the same. That's ironic. Cause mm. the same year we both competed. For yeah, the first there you time. go. Yeah, mm. I did the one show. I, um, yeah, I was in the under 80 kilogram class. It was they went by weight class back then, and um, I think I was only like 72 kilo. So I won my class, and actually I was surprised. I actually won the overall. Actually, yeah. so it was pretty cool. Yeah, and um, yeah, it was just a one-off experience. I'm glad I did it. I learned a lot. I learned a little bit from it. Yeah, the dieting, but. For me, eating's one of the greatest joys in life, so I'll, I'll stick to it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if yeah. I would, yeah, I could do it again. But so yeah. your, your fight <laughs> fight career then ended when? Um, well, I had a bit of a break after those amateur, those, after the bodybuilding, sh- yeah. I had the bodybuilding show, then I came back came back to the fight game. I had a break, would have been after my, the biggest fight, sorry, yeah, the, the biggest fight as far as fighting for a bigger title was the Commonwealth title fight. I fought for a Commonwealth title against... The champion, my name of Steve Vick from Queensland. He was um, he was known as uh, the best kicker in the in the industry. Like he was knocking everybody out with, uh, with kicks. He was actually had he got the nickname Super Kick. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I I remember the, the the build up for that fight. I I was in the best shape of my life. I trained for ten hard rounds. I knew deep my heart, after watching Steve. I'm, I'm a big fan of Steve Vick. Watching watching him. I knew that if I get through the first five rounds, which I would, which I believe I would, I'll be fine because he normally he knocks people out early with his fast kicks. And I, I, there was one particular fight I saw him, he, he was huffing and puffing after round five and I knew that my conditioning, I would get to him. So the big fight was on, it was in Melbourne. And um, I remember the call, yeah, it was round, f- at the end of round four, I, I remember going back to my corner and I look at my trainer and I said, man, I've got him, I've, I've got, I've, I know I'm going to get him, I'm going to yeah. get him. Yeah? And my trainer said, now, and I'm thinking, Five rounds after five rounds, the last six, the last five rounds after five rounds, he said, "No, no, put it on him now. Mm-hmm. You know, put it on him now." He's, yeah. he's telling me put it on him now, and I kept thinking, had I listened to my trainer and gone for it, it might have been a different result. But I remember coming out, pacing myself, just trying to annoy him, get him to exert himself a bit more because I really wanted him dead before I launched my attack because I was super fit. I thought, but um, I got caught clean. And I was knocked out cold. It was uh, it was so bad. I, I don't remember. All I remember, I woke up in the change rooms. That's how bad it was. I was a yeah. stretcher change rooms obviously i saw it on video later and i remember coming to everyone looked very worried and my mate sam was in front of me and he's telling me what happened and he tells me today to this day he remembers me saying no 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 you can't do that you can't do that no 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 give me give me the gloves one more round i promise i'll oh, just, give, just yeah. give me one more round and sam was saying no no tony it's over <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know get a chair and i was begging could i please have one more round <laughs> yeah so i had to accept the fact that yeah, i've been ko'd i mean i've been knocked out of a fight that i had had a good had the right fighting style to really upset to another upset yeah so a bit of a break then and uh, i wasn't didn't want to retire with uh, a ko loss no i don't think any fighter would like to so i came back and i had three more fights for three wins my very last fight i was actually was very exciting i was meant to fight what year was this so now we're talking 1994 yeah okay so now we're talking 
So my very last fight, I was pens- I was scheduled to fight for the Australian welterweight title. And this has been pretty pretty cool because I, my first Australian title was at super middleweight, or at the 76 and a half kilo limit. And I fought, came down to middleweight, 72 kilo. I fought for the super welterweight title here in Adelaide back in 91, I think it was, at 69. So this fight here was going to be at the 66 kilo limit. So not many fighters could say they fought for Australian titles in four different weight classes, mm. but actually going, normally you go up in weight. Like yeah, you, look you at went Ma- down. Look at the great Manny Pacquiao, like he's come up, yeah. <laughs> like eight different weight classes, like I'm actually coming down. So so I was so pumped up for this fight, and I trained so hard, and I was thinking I might actually call this a day. This might be my retirement fight. It'd be a great way to finish off. And I remember giving it everything I got in training. Unfortunately, my opponent, the champion, um, so I'm not sure what happened. I think he was injured. He wasn't able. The fight had to be cancelled. It wasn't going to go ahead. The promoter had the problem of trying to match me up with somebody. I remember yeah, he was stressing because quite a lot of you know, obviously tickets get sold based on I was fighting and, you know, and so it's lucky somebody put his hand up. It was only like ten days to go. Some young kid put his hand up. He was happy to fight. And I thought it's pretty pretty ballsy. I mean, yeah. fighting somebody who's who's prepared to fight for an Australian title that over, over eight rounds. Somebody jumping, pretty bored. But he had, but what worked against me was the fact that he hadn't, he wasn't well known. He had about six fights, five wins, one lot. Like he actually wasn't a wasn't a big name, which kind of goes against. I've always been the underdog. All of a sudden, I'm expected to win. I had this pressure of I was expected to win, and not only win, I, I wanted to win big. I wanted to win by knockout. So the fight came along, and I was just so pumped up. I got to, I have to win this by knockout. I've got to win impress. I want to make this my last fight. And I remember just. It just wasn't there. I'm trying my best to knock this guy out. <laughs> and the guy, to his credit, he took it on short notice. He just, he gave you, it, was, it was, I was hoping it was going to be a six or eight round fight. It was only a four round fight. So the four rounds was over. I won a unanimous decision. I was just disappointed in myself that I, I surely, I, you know, I'm at a level I shouldn't be able to, I shouldn't be struggling to. Yeah. <laughs> and my, my trainer, Paul, and I had a good chat after. And a couple of weeks later, I said, you know what? It's been a great, it's been a great, been a great journey. Let's, I'm going to call it a day. Yeah. Been, so, I, how old were you then? So, 1980. So, it would have been 94. 94. Yeah. So, I was, uh, I would have been 30 years of age. Okay. So, I had a good career. Yeah. Fought for Australian yeah. titles and three different weight classes, and uh, yeah, made a lot of friends. More importantly, I made a lot of friends. I met some, met some great yeah. people who are my friends today. And so, yeah. And so, it was time to call it a day, and mm. I, that's where I really got involved with, because thinking about my future and yeah. and setting myself up. One thing I, I noticed, I watched your videos and your, your trainer, Paul. Yep. He, he, he mentioned a few things like, um, you know, that he would give you tactics for a fight. And when the fight <laughs> happened, you didn't listen to any of those tactics. <laughs> do, you, do you think that that was an issue that maybe cost you fights? I of noticed course. that you were a very aggressive fighter. Like yep. from the bell, you just went hammer and tong straight in there. Do you think you were maybe too aggressive, not too, not tactical enough? Because yeah. you know, there's a lot of tactics when it comes to fighting as well. Yeah. Uh, look, and you seem to be like, like, it's like the bell went and you went in there like a raging ball. Yeah. And do you think that that maybe yeah, cost course. you a number of fights, of and, and you could have been a better fighter if? If I yeah. sum that up in one word, that's what you call fear. When you when you have fear, like when you have fear, you become more aggressive. You want to protect mm. what you what, what we've worked hard yeah. for. You know, so I didn't. I had the best trainer you could ask for. I could get, I couldn't, couldn't ask for better advice than the trainer I've had. You know, yeah. and I blew, those, I blew some valuable um, recommendations to do in training because I was just so, um, yeah, so anxious to score a knockout. And you know, everybody wanted to, was a knockout. You know, when a knockout. he was talking, I got the impression that he was a bit frustrated with you. Oh, that, of course, that you yeah. could have most probably done so much I better. Love, <laughs> I, I love him so much for the patience he's given me over the years. Not only is my trainer as a friend, he's giving me good life advice and everything. Like, um, I'm just so lucky to have great people around me, and I've, I appreciate his patience because yeah, I wouldn't have been easy. I wouldn't have been easy because I was just yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember. I remember one particular many years ago. I'll share this. I was so anxious. I was. This is all when I was training to fight for my first my first title. I was I was loading up on my opponents, which was absolutely a big no no in training. Like you, your training partners come in to help you out. You know, you shouldn't be loading up on them. And I remember. Loading up on everybody and Paul's pulling the back. Tony, pull up. Tony, <laughs> pull up. You know, next opponent come in. I'm blowing and I'm just getting the better of him. And I just want to start yeah. loading up. And I keep hearing Tony, pull up. So then a few rounds, all of a sudden I turn around and Paul jumped in the ring. I thought, oh, okay, I'm going to do a round Paul. I'd smart Paul before, no yeah. drama. That's all right. And my God, did I copper? <laughs> did I copper hiding? Did I copper hiding? My God. And 
there was absolutely yeah for the whole two minutes it was just constantly my head was just it was like <laughs> like yeah. a soccer ball it was getting bomb 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 <laughs> yeah, he's, he, uh, then when the round finished he had a good spray and he and he and he had, had his, and he in front of everyone you know and he, and yelling at me, expressing his disappointment at me. Uh, these guys are here to train to help you, and here you are loading up on it. Yeah. And I remember I just shut my mouth and I, I apologised and got my bag, went home. I remember it was quite funny. It was it was Saint Valentine's Day, and I was seeing a girl, <laughs> this girl that I was seeing that evening. I was I went to visit her at a place. We went to go for dinner, and I remember rocking up at her place. And her face when she when she saw when she opened the door and saw because my face was yeah. mangled. I'd, <laughs> My face had been mangled, and she's got she go, ah! <laughs> 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 she like, what happened? And, yeah. But, yeah, she wasn't impressed. But anyway, that's, that's another story. No, no big injuries while you were fighting or anything? I mean, um, of course you get beat up and, and all that. Yeah, but, yeah, no, know, I've, I've, been, I've been pretty lucky. No, yeah. just an arthroscope of my knee at one point. So I'm, I'm very lucky. I've, I've always... Um, yeah, I've been very lucky. By training, I always do. I always believe in variation in training. I don't continue the same thing. So yeah. I mean, I'll cycle sometimes now. You know, more so. I want longevity. I mean, I'm in my fifties now. I'm thinking now. I want to be training in my sixties because I love what I do. Yeah. So I'm going to be smart now in my training. Yeah. yeah. So. So 1994. Yeah. That was the end. Um, was the end. What did you do then after that? Just went yeah. back to working. Then continue I'll, with Max. You, you obviously with Max. worked with Maxis through all this time. For the whole time. So I was always. I never. Yeah. I never trained full time. I was always had a job. You know, yeah. Some of my. Some of my training buddies would just, <laughs> I'd rock up and they didn't do much during the day, but I'd, I'd actually work a whole full day, eight yeah. hour day on the road visiting clients. So I just focused on doing what I love doing. That was working with Maxes and you know, I still tra- yeah. always train, maintain my fitness and everything. And um, and this, what I'm going to share now is like a Rocky story. 16, well, pretty well, six, I'll just... 16 I'll, years later. Yeah, exactly <laughs> right. So for 16 years, you, you were out of the fight game. Yeah, I still train. And then yeah. all of a sudden, what yeah. happened there? Yeah, well... After that last fight, so after, we're now 2010. Uh, yeah, yep. So 2010. But just before that, when 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 I retired in in 1994, I I started teaching uh, martial arts. Uh, sorry, started teaching more kickboxing classes. Yep. My mate Sam Greco had a had a uh, martial arts academy in Brunswick, and I started there. And then from there, we also train uh, took classes at a place called the Underworld Fitness Center in the city, Melbourne CBD. So I was, so I was teaching. That's Doherty's now, isn't it? It's, it's now Doherty's gym. Yeah, yes, it is. Right, yeah. yeah, that was the very first. I can remember yeah, so, Underworld. Yeah. So the Underworld Fitness Center was was Australia's very first twenty four hour gym. Yes. Yeah, even before Tony. Before way before Tony. Yeah. 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 Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Australia's very first twenty four. I got a gym. story about Underworld. I'll quickly tell. I went there before. He, turned into Doherty's yeah. <laughs> and I went there with a friend of mine this was like years ago as mm-hmm. well and um, we went into the train there and um, I told my mate I'm there you go ahead and get changed you know mm-hmm. I'll pay for the casual mm-hmm. and I went to the counter and there was this huge guy at the counter like he was six foot six he was a massive imposing guy and I said oh two casual visits and he goes you know 60 bucks Jeez. and I'm there I said no no I don't want a month's membership I just want two <laughs> casual visits he goes 30 bucks each and I called my mate. I'm the mate. Hey, hey, Gary, you know, come back and pay for your own fucking work. <laughs> yeah, you know? I'm not, I'm not yeah. This yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I thought that was really funny. And he didn't laugh when I said I didn't want a month's membership. You know, he just <laughs> still had the same stony look on his face. <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, so that was great. Yeah, so yeah, so so I was teaching classes and anyway. Then um, I always trained and. The number kickboxing in in Melbourne especially took off. It was actually very popular thanks to. This is the huge success internationally of the K1 circuit in Japan. And yeah. I, I was lucky enough to go to Japan on two occasions to support two of my friends. One was um, when Stan Longanides and Tosca Petridis fought on one card, and then another one was my mate Sam Greco fought another card. So mm, I just yeah. got, got to see they're two uh, big names two, in boxing. Two yeah, very I big can names. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're good friends of mine. So I, was, I went across to support them. And um, the biggest promoter in Australia, his name is Tarek Solak. He was putting on the big shows, he, he brought the sport up. From, like, like he was lucky, yeah, pay pay per view came his way too. So he's actually, and uh, everybody, people would want to fight on his show for, for free just to get on his show. He, yeah. he put on the best shows, <laughs> and um, Tarek and I actually fought each other years ago. We actually, we we were actually main event fight, <laughs> he and I, and on our undercard we'd have big names like Tosca Petridis, Stan Longanides had his very first fight on our undercard. So we, yeah. we just, that's, that's <laughs> so our main that, event. We were the main event. Yeah. That's our. That's our uh, <laughs> It's our boast. It's our uh, moment of glory. We, we, we reflect on. We have a good laugh over it. So yeah, yeah. we fought each other back in '84. We've um, maintained f- friends since then, and we've trained together occasionally. And I remember getting this phone. Get ready for this. So Saturday night, it was like just after 10 p.m. I get a miss. I get a call. A missed call from Tarek Solak. I'm like, Jeez. Oh my God. I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I will ring him. I'll, I'll ring him just in case I'm, if he's all right. So I rang up. 
Buddy, I didn't realize at the time. Uh, listen, I've been telling you I'm putting on this big show very soon. I'd love you to be part of it, mate. Like this, mate. Just stop and think about it, mate. Like, you, mate, you're fit enough, mate. Yeah, mate. The crowd, will, the crowd, will, like, he's saying all the right things, you know, as a promoter mm. would. Yeah. <laughs> the crowd will love it. Like, no, mate, you'll call, you'll fill in a big crowd. And I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I'm, I'm at a stage in my life, mate. I, I could do it for a challenge. You know, I was really, I said, Tarek, honestly, buddy, I'd love to do it. I, I, I. I I just need two approvals, my wife <laughs> and Paul. So you pretty Paul, well made the decision then? I was, you had no plans I, on fighting or anything? No, well, I, or, I, you know? the, the idea would, come, would cross your mind sometimes. Yeah. How cool would it be to make and a comeback? And you were how old now? I was 46. 46. So making a comeback 16 years after yeah. my last fight, it's, you, know, you, you never hear of a footballer doing that or no. a lot of sports. You know? So, so I, I got excited. Some that, Olympia that, that, bodybuilders that, are doing that these days. There they? you go, yeah. 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 <laughs> true, true, true. Yeah. <laughs> So um, it, it, it really interested me, and I and I be honest, I don't know why. I got off the phone. and I said to myself, "This is going to happen." I, I I got this feeling this is going to happen. So this is like you know, all of a sudden it's, we're approaching 11 p.m. on a Saturday night. I just had to train. <laughs> was there I had to was train. there you know like was there money involved? Like did he say, "Yeah, well, mate, oh, look, I'm going to throw some money at you"? you yeah, know, well, we, yeah, yeah. To, to his word, he what he promised me, he was going to pay me. He paid me, and. Um, the promotion ended up being a huge success, which I, I'll be honest, I doubted. He was, the ticket sales were like $500 per ticket. It was it was $5,000 for a table, 10 people, ten to a table, free course meal. Yeah. I said, Terry, are you, are you serious? He goes, Trust me, Tony, they're going to come. They're going to they're gonna come. And I said, yeah, so, it's a lot of money, mate. So you're 46 money, years old. Mm-hmm. Out of the blue, this phone call, how how long to the fight? Yeah, so the fight was in 11 weeks. 11, 11 weeks. 11 weeks. And I remember, and I to that night, I, the, the best thing I could have done was when I got off the phone, I was just, I spoke to my wife, I said, this, this, this is what just happened. I was at this phone call and she goes, babe, it's a, it's a dangerous sport. She goes, mm. it's a dangerous sport. I mean, you know, from what I've seen, it's, it's real, you know, my wife wasn't part of my life when I, in my, so fir- she in my first career, fight. she'd never seen me fight. No. You know, yep. she only seen what she seen. You know, she knew I trained hard and I'm fit and all that stuff, but you know, she, yeah, she, the last thing she wanted to see is, it's, it's, a, it's a young man's sport, let's be honest. Yeah. I had to train, so I went in my shed. And I've got a boxing bag. I was beautiful, <laughs> and I remember you were going to train that night. I, I, had, I had to. I, I had to train. <laughs> I had this training session, and I remember finishing saying, "One session down, I'm, I'm on yeah. track. I'm on track." I went to bed. I woke up the next morning, and I realised this is going to happen. I teed up a meeting with my. Like, you know, I called Paul. I tried to get a meeting with Paul. He was, he's a school. My, my Paul Fife was a school teacher, so I called him. And, when I, and I had to say, listen, I've got to talk to you over the phone. This is what's happened. I've been given this great opportunity. I really, really want to do this. I'm, I'm just, I'm at a stage where I just, just, I'm losing my motivation to train. I don't want to go down the path of, and I really need something to, and then Paul, Paul we caught up and had a chat over it, and he basically, he set the rules. He said, if, if at one stage you show, you know, you show this interest, I'm, I'm calling it off. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, so of course, you know, so the goal, the agreement was, if at any stage, Paul thought I wasn't holding my end, holding my end, which was never going to happen. I'm, I'm always going to give 100. <laughs> percent He had the right to call the fight off, as because he cares for me as a friend. He's not, mm. he's not interested in being in the corner for any publicity. <laughs> That's not Paul. He yeah. he genuinely cares for his fighters. He's a good friend of mine, and I the only way I was going to work is if I had, I needed Paul in my corner. I needed my wife to support me. I needed Paul in my corner. Once I had that that of, of the line, then the, the, then we shook. I shook hands with the promoter, and I'm telling you, it was probably a week. Big street, like I'm telling you, there's no way you could pull that out. The big street posters went out <laughs> all yeah. over the streets, and I'm getting phone calls, and I figured, geez, even if I wanted to pull out, <laughs> I couldn't pull out of this fight now. I can, so, I can remember, cause, yeah, I was around <laughs> in big this news, yeah. back then, and um, yeah. this it was a huge deal in Melbourne, wasn't it? Yeah, big deal, yeah, and, yeah. yeah. And the promoters, we made an agreement financially. If we get, a, if we sell, if, if the house, if it's a sellout, whatever, based on ticket sales, yeah. We, he worked something out. I said, no. He goes, Tony, you just focus on the fight. Because you, mate, you're going to be under a lot of pressure that night. Just, he said to me, just focus on the fight. Don't worry about ticket sales. You just focus on the fight. So you were the main event? I was or... I was what they call a prestige event. They had an eight-man tournament. Yeah. So the final fight would be the main event. But yeah. I was the I was the, the last fight, the prestige fight. The yeah. fight, that was, you, could say, yeah. you could say that. But it was really, it was an eight-man tournament. And the final two would fight off in the main event. So, yeah. yeah. And but mom, really, the talk was all about you. <laughs> well, well, I was the only Victorian fighting on the show. Pretty yeah, much, you know, they were all interstaters. My good mate Paul Slawinski from Adelaide yes. fought on the show, and yep. I, was, I was so glad to have him there as well because backstage having Paul, I, I've always been I've been very lucky. I've got good people around me, and, and having Paul's presence. I remember once being here in Adelaide, I, need, I needed to train, <laughs> and my mate Nick Jones, 
uh, we, we needed a place to train. Nick Jones again organised his his garage where he was staying. We could yeah. train there. It was on a Sunday. <laughs> Paul Smith came down, held the pads for me, <laughs> yeah, just to make sure I get my training in. Like yeah, so mm. I've, I've always been lucky to have good people around me. At um, all my all my training was under my coach Paul, of course. But if I was travelling at the state, you know, I'd always make sure I get a good session in somewhere somehow. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the fight went ahead. Uh, it was it was the toughest. I'll, I'll say it now, but that lead up to it was the toughest ten weeks of training leading up to it. It was. Everything in the gym, like everyone's job in the gym was to beat me up. I was sparring guys half my age, and my mind willing, body isn't like, as you get older, you don't want to accept it, but your reflexes do go. You just don't have the same reflexes that you once did. And I I knew fight time, I I I don't want to sound cocky, but fight time, I know how to fight. I know under pressure, I'll I'll be able to fight. But it was getting my reflexes back, which I just, I struggled. I was getting... I was getting beaten to the punch. I was coming home with black eyes. My wife's looking at me. Going, Tony, is it really worth it? You know, this mm. was well. No, I'll, be, I'll be fine. It's just part of the preparation. It's gonna. Ha- it's gonna happen. And, and I've never been evasive. I've always been easy, quite easy to hit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to admit. I was. I was never a, a very technical fighter. I was always. Yeah. I would outwork my opponents and. So it was getting a bit frustrating f- f- for me because I hadn't won it. I don't think I won a round in sparring. Like six weeks would go by, seven weeks go by, and I'm, I'm just getting out beaten. Everyone's but. The guys care about me. Everything was real. Everything was yeah. real because they're preparing me for a hard fight. Because I knew fight time. You know? And so um, I remember this is quite a funny story. I still had the I was, I was still lucky enough to drop my kids off at school every morning. Something I, I pride myself in doing. I love dropping my kids mm. off at school. So I, I used to have my I'd do my, my my early morning run, come back, shower up, and I'd get a chance to drop my kids off at school. And I remember dropping the kids off at school and. and um, Couple, of, we kept it, my wife and I kept. We didn't, we didn't tell our kids what I was doing, even yep. though the posters were out. I didn't think they were going to catch on. They were still quite young at this yeah. stage. I remember one one stage. I come home, and my wife said to me, "Tony, I've got to talk to you." One of the ladies from school said, "Ask me why is Tony fighting? Well, seriously, he's, 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 yeah. <laughs> he's a he's a husband. He's an old man. He's a husband. <laughs> he's, a husband. He's, he's in his forties. <laughs> uh, seriously." Uh, what, what's he doing it for? Seriously, They're like, isn't that risky? Aren't you, aren't you worried? Like, aren't mm. you worried? You go, and the best part was, he said, obviously, he, he can't be very good. He's always bagged. All, every time I see him, he's got black eyes. He's got black eyes. He, he can't be very good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so why, why bother? <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah. So my wife's telling me, yeah. So um, anyway, the, we stuck to, we we had the best preparation we could. I got I got banged up a bit, as you'd expect. But um, fight time, I'll be honest, I... I would have beat anybody that night. I was I was in the best shape of my life. I trained so hard for it. And, yeah. Uh, yep. It was a. And as for as far as the promotion goes, like yeah, I remember at the press conference, I just I just knew right now. I remember shaking hands with my opponent where I saw him for the first time. Went to shake his hand, and there was a, there was a bit of a script going on which I wasn't aware of. He, he clicked me. He, as I, went I, sh- saw that. As I, I went, saw that footage. Yeah. yeah. As I yeah. went as I went to shake his hand, he, he slapped me on the top of the on the top of the head. Yeah. Which caused a reaction from me, of course, as you would. Like, so, so I've, I've attacked him, and everyone jumped in and broke it up. But so you it, didn't know it, anything it, about it. Was, it, it wasn't planned. Or it was anything? a publicity stunt. Yeah, but you didn't know anything. I didn't know about it. No, the promoter told me later, Tony. I knew if I told you, you might, you might not have got, got, gone to plan. Yeah. I'm sorry to do that to you, man. This, but <laughs> I want a full house, and you want a full house too. Trust me, yeah. because he was going to pay me very well, which he did. <laughs> <laughs> trust me. I, knew, I know you thanked me later. That made the, the Channel Nine news in Melbourne. That went. That went. And <laughs> anyways. Uh, say no more. It was a sellout. It was, yep. it was packed. Uh, seriously, nineteen. Sorry, two thousand and ten. To pay five hundred dollars for a for a seat. It's, it's a yeah. lot of money. That's a lot of money mm. today. And it was a lot of money back then. What he did do at, at the last two days, he, he opened it up. Standing room only, a hundred dollars. He yep. had a few amount, a few tickets for those. So yeah, he managed, so where was the fight held? In Melbourne, it was at the showgrounds. Yeah, Melbourne showgrounds. Um, my wife was there and. Uh, I remember, yeah, the, I remember the warm up. I, everything was fine. I was, I, it's funny. I, I was, I was feeling good, strong. When the moment came to come out, the pressure got to me a bit. I thought, geez, you know, this is going, this is going to get, this is getting, um, get. I, I really hope I don't let anybody down because everybody was there and it, mm. there was expectations. People want to see the old Tony, but I'm 16 years older, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, did all of a sudden uh, like a realization hit? Like, absolutely. oh my God, you yeah. know, yeah, this is getting, yeah. yeah, this is serious. Mm. This is serious. So, um. My opponent came out like a man, like he came out. He tried to unsettle me, jumped on me straight away, tagged me a bit, tagged me a bit, which I was a bit rusty. You know, we expected that. I, and I said that in the press conference. I said that. I said, I promise you this. 
I'll be the one finishing stronger. I'm going to get stronger and fitter every round because my yeah. mind was made up. I knew whatever it took to win, I was going to, I was going to, I was going to make sure I won. But you know, my reflexes—it's just the reality. You just—they're just not the same anymore. You know, they're just not the same. Yeah. I can remember you copped a few hits. I copped a few at the start, yeah, yeah. A few start. But um, then I got then I got into it, and I remember for the first time I finally listened to my trainer. <laughs> I, scored, <laughs> I scored a knockdown, and I kicked it. I went to my corner, I looked over to my corner. Looked, it's the first thing I did is I looked over to my corner and I was thinking, finally! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the first thing he said is, hands up, because he knew that I was going to charge. He knew yeah. I was going to go in for the kill. I'd really knocked him down. Yeah. And there was, so I just went out there and I just put it on him and I landed a good hard shot and we scored a knockout. But having said that, at the time the bell went. That was a first round knockout. It was right, yeah, right yeah. up. So, so one I, round. I actually hit him right on the so I think it was 159 of round, of round number. One, so yeah. it was a two minute. It was a two minute round. Yeah, I mean, with you were five, eight two minute rounds. I think it was. Yeah, so it was first. Yeah, one fifty nine. I think it was. I thought the bell had gone. I thought I was going to get disqualified because I hit him after uh, the bell. Yeah, so yeah. I wasn't sure at the time. My arm wasn't raised and everything. And then bang, and then the announcement came, and I got my arm raised. And yeah, was I can remember because you, you turned to the camera. Yeah, and you actually asked, "Did I win?" Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know it what must happened. Have been, did the camera guy go yes? Because yeah. you all of a sudden went yeah. 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 That's what I <laughs> But being mixed emotions too, because I'll be honest, I trained so hard. I had a lot. To, I had a lot to give that night, like I always do, and I just didn't get a chance to. Yeah. My so it was it. There was euphoria yeah. and disappointment in a way. Yeah. 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 I mean, look, uh, be grateful. Could, could have gone pear shape, you know. Yeah, that's shape. right. As it, I know, I'm not being disrespectful. My opponent wasn't as as great as as tough as I expected him to be. You yeah. Know? Yeah. He came out hard at the start, but he wasn't going anywhere. He probably disheartened him, whatever it was, but. The, the reality is, it was as a promoter, it would have been hard to find me an opponent because let's face it, if, if I got if I got beat up on my comeback fight, good chance you know, he'd have he'd have to answer a lot of people. Well, what, what, what kind of promoter are you? Yeah, can't have somebody too easy because he's always wanted hard fights, and I knew it was going to be a hard fight because there's no such thing as an easy fight in the fight game. Two guys want to win. <laughs> there's no such thing as an easy fight, you know. That's so right. pressure, got, you fact that pressure into everything. So. Anyway, it was a it was a great moment. It was beautiful, yeah. and I remember all my friends came in the change rooms. It was a beautiful time. We were all together. Everyone was happy for me. And the people I looked up to as a kid. I was. It's funny. I got the referee, Dave Hitchcock, was a referee. Someone I looked up to when I was a kid. My trainer, Paul Fifield, was in my corner. My childhood mate, you know, been there since day one. Mm-hmm. In my corner, I had Sam Greco, Tosca Petridis in my corner. I had, I had, you know, there's a lot of good, my good friends there in the crowd. I had some people I looked up to. George Zachariah, Percy Lance, yeah. oh yeah, and uh, here I am, I'm the main event. Yeah. <laughs> As a kid, I used to look up to these guys, and here I am, I'm the main event, they're all here for me. It was a pretty, pretty cool moment. Cool moment. So, um, yeah, not to mention it was my biggest payday ever. Yeah. <laughs> that went that well. I went more that far than my whole career. Yeah. <laughs> so the promoter was fantastic, yeah, it was very fair, it was obviously based on it, it was a sellout, so it was, it was cool, and um, life was good, yeah, and um, it was a one fight. One fight only. I, yeah, I mean, be realistic. It's a young man's sport. Be grateful. I could have got. Mm. I could have got badly hurt. You were in phenomenal shape, though. I can yeah. that, mm. in that video. You there was yeah. uh, no doubt that you were not prepared. Yeah, physically no, yeah. and mentally, you could see it. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I was going to win. There's no. Yeah, I was going to do my best. That was all that happened. So yeah, so overall, you know, it's a good way. To, it was a good retirement fight. Call it a, yeah, yeah. It was a nice way to say goodbye and think. I'm lucky. I've over the years, I made some great friends. I'm very grateful to. The people I've, mm. who I still have as friends today, which you, people who care about me, like people, I remember people hearing about me fighting, and I'm saying, Tony, what are you doing for? And I was, you know, yeah. we're going to come and support you. And I said, guys, honestly, just watch it at home. What, you can watch it on pay on pay per view for fifty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't bother coming to the show. It's a, you know, it. I told them how much. I said, how much? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not watching Evander Holyfield, am I? That's <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. So. That was it, and um, yeah. So looking back now, I'm glad I went through it all because um, it's, um, yeah, hopefully uh, my kids will, at one point, at, at some stage, will learn about yeah. What I, if you really put your mind to something, if, perhaps, it's one of the reasons I really do things in life. I think about what I do today, and I I like to leave a good message for my kids that you know, obviously I want my kids to be academic, and which they I'm very grateful they're off to a great start. But, but um, yeah, to have a good. Um, a good drive to do what you want to do is very really important to me, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. So yeah. I hope in some ways, you know, so I'm making a comeback after 16 years, finding a guy. My opponent was half my age; he was only 23. So yeah. we're talking half my age, you know. To do, yeah, if you put your mind to something really and you surround yourself with good people, you know, you can yeah. make it happen. You know? the only, that only happened because I was part of a team. That's right. On my own, I wouldn't be able. To, no, I needed my mate. Yeah, yeah. Box, boxing control. really is. It's, 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 it's a, a team. Big, yeah, big, big team event. You know, yeah. and I had my friends there supporting me. Like I, yeah, as a team, but. 
when the bell goes, you are on your own. <laughs> you're yeah. on your own. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. that was 2010. 2010. And, um, so you just went back to your job. You obviously keep training. You always yep, stay in the right yeah. And, and um, now you've segued into powerlifting. Powerlift, yes. A um, good friend of mine, Barry Murray, who... Um, Power, so how did that start all of a sudden? Like, I actually did. Was, you all of a sudden just go? I want to lift everything. It's quite funny. I yeah. actually went, I went to a, I went to support a powerlifting, powerlifting event. So I went there with my Max's range of products. I had a bit, had a set up a yeah. stall, give on sampling. I knew mm. I knew all the guys. I'm sort of pretty much know a lot of people in Melbourne. So it was, it was pretty cool to catch up with everyone. And I was watching watching this powerlifting competition. I thinking, wow, I just love the camaraderie going on here. Like mm. everyone supports each other here. Like it's just watching backstage. You know, everyone gets encouraged and. And I thought, wow, I mean, this is like a, this is pretty cool, and you really chose it. This is very different to what I've ever done because yep. I'm into high cardio my whole life. It's all about you know, mm. VO2 max, VO2 max. That's right. <laughs> These guys are one rep, sit down for 10 minutes. That's or right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I spoke to my mate Barry. I said, Barry, I wouldn't mind having a crack at this one day. You know, like, I reckon this was a deadlift only event. I said, I might have a crack at something like this. Yeah. And, um, right, no worries, Barry. Organise a well, yeah. <laughs> membership form. He gave it to me. Fill that out tonight, blah, blah. We'll get, yeah. we'll get started. We've got a comp coming up in three months. Blah, blah, blah. So, so thought, again, thought, another 12 week prep. I thought, why not? <laughs> I said, why not? I said, my goal is, I was never I was never strong. I was never super strong. You know? Yeah. I thought, you know, my goal is, what is if I can pull 100 kilo more than my body weight, that's, oh, that was my goal. So, yeah. just pull 100 kilos. So I was weighing about 75 kilos. I said, if I had for a 175 kilo deadlift, yeah, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Because I think mm. my best ever was like 130, so I wasn't really, I wasn't really a heavy lifter. I, yeah, it never, yeah. wasn't really part of my mm. program. So w- the first thing I learned was b- being around professional coaches like Barry and Ange Gilardi. They taught me correctly how to what a deadlift's about. I used to yeah. think it was a pulling exercise. We didn't understand how, how important it is to push of your feet and yeah. drive those hips and yeah, mm. lock those arms out. So just by correcting my form and obviously the drills we went through over and over again I, I, I ended up we, we ended up challenging we had a crack at the Australian record the Australian record was only 185 for my age group so I'm in yeah. the 50 to 54 age group yeah and the and under, and the under 82 kilogram division was only 185 I thought well, I've got a chance fucking if, if I can pull 175 what's an extra 10 you know yeah. <laughs> <Blob it up. laughs> so we had a crack and we went for it and we caught we pulled we pulled the 187 and a half on the day so I said so on my very first comp I set an Australian record yeah that was big news for me and a lot of my friends were proud of me and I was, it was pretty cool first powerlifting record you know so then I did an, then I said okay I'm gonna compete under 75 because I, I could easily get in a lighter weight class so I so my next comp, I did a under seventy five kilo division, and I set a new Australian record in that one as well. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm patting my chest. I said, "What do you mm. think, coach?" You know, he goes, "You're not a power lifter until you do the free lift event." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Okay." So a free lift event, as for those who don't know, is you need to do a you squat, bench press, and deadlift all on the same day, one rep yeah. max, and you total you get, get a decent mm. total. So away I went. I did my first free lift event. In, I did it in two weight classes and in a different federation as well too, and. Um, I'm proud to say that in, I've, in two years I've competed seven times, and every time I've set new Australian records in every comp I've competed in. So I'm, yep. really, I'm really, this is my in my age group, of course. That's right. Yeah. So, so your first group, comp was 182 and a half. Was uh, 187 and a half. 187 and yep. a half. And your last, what's your what's your best competition lift now? My David? best competition now is at 205. 205. 205. Yep. yep. Um, I know I could pull a 210 because I, I got a 210 up on my last comp, but it, I overextended myself, so I lost my balance. And yeah. so, but that's okay. I, I, I'm, I'm improving, you know. I'm improving. But mm. um, it's quite interesting. Like my first three months of training, I improved f- like 50 kilos from what, what my, my previous best was to, <laughs> to comp day over three months. Then the next 12 months, how hard I trained, I improved like. Twelve and a half kilo. That's right. Like, you know, there's only yeah. twelve. Like, so it's actually, <laughs> yeah, because I'm actually yeah. doing. Yeah. So there's not, not much room for impro- there's still room for improvement, of course, but the major improvements have been done. You know. That's so right. So my is grinding away now. My goal is to this year. This might be my last year. I'm competing. I'm, I've, I've set myself a goal. I'm, I'm going to compete in three free lift events coming yep. up. I've got one coming up in four weeks, which I then one, so one here in in May next month, one in June, yep. and, in, and in August. And then in December, I plan to do the deadlift only event and want to finish off the year lifting three times my body weight. That's my goal. Yeah. So I'm hoping one day to pull a 225 deadlift. Um, I'm proud of my, my, where I'm at. I mean, I'm doing it my way. I mean, mm. I'm not taking any magic pills. <laughs> like I'm, I'm happy to just be the best I can be and uh, I like my own personal improvement. So yeah, that's my yep. goal. So that's my goal. So yeah, free lift event coming up soon. I'm aiming high. I'm aiming for 500 kilo total, which is... Yeah, 
just over 50 kilo more than my last total. So aiming for some good numbers. But I'm enjoying it. Like I said, I'm part of a great team there at Slaughterhouse Gym. This is Ange Galati. Those, yes. those of you who don't know who Ange Galati is, Ange Galati is by far Australia's strongest bench presser Mr. ever. Bench. His, his name is Mr. Bench yeah, for a good right. reason. Yeah. He's well known all over the world. I'm talking Russia. Like he's actually very well respected. He's only a guy that can bench press three and a half times his body weight. It's mm. just ridiculous. Like, and, like, and he's in a bodybuilder type yeah. condition, like so physique he's a, wise. He's yeah. a multi. He's a multi. He's a bodybuilding he's champion. Bodybuilding he's champion. About, yeah. IFBB never. He's competed yeah. so many times, won so many Victorian Australian titles, and uh, yeah. So, but uh, Barry's my 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 100 percent coach. He's um for mindset and raw power and, and, and intelligence of doing strategically planning my workouts and between the yep. two of them I'm, I'm, in, I'm in great hands there so yep. yeah but having said that too my kickboxing may still come and support me when I do the powerlifting comp I've got some my PT clients come and support me yeah, yeah it's, mm. it's pretty cool you know, yeah, so I'm lucky yep. there and it's something I'm enjoy, I can I enjoy doing it's, not, it's a sport where you need less is more like I can't in my younger days, I train hard every day. You can't do that now. I mean, no. I'm in my fifties. <laughs> I'll be fifty-four this year. I've got to be smart. No more than heavy twice a week, max. You know, that's it. Sometimes yeah. every second week you go heavy. You know, so yeah. Mm. To listen to my coach, to listen to the program, believe in the program. So all your, all your big lifts, all your record lifts, they've all been done in competition, not in gym. Like you've lived, all my, you all lived my big, all my you big haven't lifts, done two ten in the never, gym. Never, never. All my, all my big lifts comp day. Like this time, to, time to rise, man. Yeah, time, yeah, yeah. Time to so lift, the training yeah. is like, don't worry about a PB while you're training. Worry mm. about a PB during the event. Yep. Yeah. On the day, yeah. Do, mm. be the best you can. Prepare yourself the best you can, leading up to it. Yeah. So, yeah. You're not tempted to go out and lift, try it, and. In training, yeah, yeah, yeah I, like I'm, what I'm, if, I'm I suppose if you didn't do it, it would be a real have demoralizing. Seen, thing. Have you seen my coach Barry? We, we, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he scares me. Yeah, <laughs> I remember I would start training and I'd be keen to do my next set, and he'd say, yeah. "Sit down, Tony." And I'd say, "Sit down." Yeah, <laughs> ten minutes. Okay, ten minutes. I got to get cold here. Yeah, <laughs> ten minutes before my next set, you really want to yeah. give hundred percent. Yeah, so I've come from a different background. You know, I said, mm. "Yeah, all right." <laughs> so no, it's, I'm enjoying it, and the beauty is, it's not as time consuming. Like you know. It's, so it's a, one day a week I'll go and try push heavy and yeah. then I'll fit in my other training while, I've, while I'm teaching my classes or PT clients so I can always yeah. in my own little PT training so it ties in wordfully I believe in good balance my family is the most important thing I've got, I've got yeah. my family time I was going to ask you that you know? I mean yeah. you, you, you talk about balance but you, yeah. to me it seems like you do so much you yeah. work you work full time for Maxis yep you do your powerlifting training. You're a personal trainer as well. Yep, I'm, I'm up early every morning. I'm, I'm so a what do you, I'm a as a personal person, trainer, yeah. you do more fight type training? Is yeah, that what you do? Uh, my, my training I teach uh, strength and conditioning, uh, obviously boxing, kickboxing yep. is, is what I specialize in. When it comes to contest preparation, I would I would recommend I would somebody else to look after that. Like, yep. I've, had, I've had that situation before. But um, for strength and conditioning and boxing training, that's, that's what I love doing. I've got yep. some great clients. I've been, yeah, I've done very well. I'm proud of all of them. They've all seeing them achieve their goals and being part of their, their journey is great and it's mm. very rewarding so I'm, I get up early mo- most mornings because I that's it's just me I'm a morning person and um, yeah I take a few classes I teach boxing classes and strength strength conditioning classes like power circuit classes yeah mm. so that's what I do so I've got work out of a gym called Fight Fit Boxing Centre mm-hmm. and they've got one in South Melbourne one in, and one in Collingwood most of my classes and uh, yeah which is also owned by my good friend Paul Fifield yeah he's a part owner of that so yeah so um, um um, life's pretty good, and yeah. uh, like I said, family time is, most, is so important to me. Of course, uh, as, you, as, you, as anybody parent would say, but I do find a balance, and yeah, I'm very blessed. I've got three healthy children, a beautiful wife, and uh, life is yeah, life's pretty good. Life's yeah. Pretty good. yeah, I love my job, as you know. You've, I've been doing. Mm-hmm. Pretty, I mean, not many people do the same job for 26 years. You know? That's <laughs> I right. mean, I've had plenty of opportunities. To do other no, I'm very happy what I do. I've, like I said, I'm work, part of a great team at Max's. Um, over the years, I've made some, built some great relationships like yourself. I love traveling, catching up with people. And yeah, so every day is exciting. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's yeah. a terrific outlook. Yeah. Well, Tony, that was that was great. Mm. I'm, I've known you for a long time, but I mm. learned so much about you. Um, I enjoy all these chats I have with people because there's, there's things that I mm. think I know about people, but I don't, you know. Mm. I've always admired your drive, your drive and your ten- tenacity and everything that you do. I've noticed that and I follow what you do all the time and see you on Instagram and everything. So mm. um, I think this was a, a great chat and I really enjoyed mm. it. So thanks for coming. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm from... Like I said, I feel honoured if someone was interested to learn about my, want, want to know about my story, and hopefully that may inspire some people in their fifties who think, 
uh, life's over. It's not over That's because right. I, from I, it. I, I plan yeah. I plan to train in my sixties as well. So, but we've got to be smart too. You got to make yeah. you be smart. You know, if you got to rest more than train and, and variation in training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I agree the same. Mm-hmm. Um, I still love training, and I most probably train harder now than I have before in yeah. my life. But you got to train a little bit smarter. Be smart, yeah. Every time I walk into the gym, I tell myself like, don't do don't do anything stupid. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, you know, be sensible. And be if sensible. you don't do anything stupid, yeah. you know, I, I've outlasted and out-trained exactly. people half my age. You know, they got stupid injuries, but I've been lucky. I haven't had any injuries, and I think that's because you train smart. Got to train smart, exactly. Yeah, yeah. and I, Excellent. yep. No, uh, I've some of the strongest I've ever been right now, and um, it wouldn't be if I wasn't making smart decisions because you could easily get injured. You know? That's right. A lot of my friends are injured, and they, they don't. They, they've sort of given up and. Because of, because of an injury and um, yeah, if you can avoid it, mm. um, why wouldn't you? Of course, you know, yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. Thank you very much, Tony. No, thank you, Kim. It's a uh, great. So uh, maybe my kids will listen to this one day yeah. when they're old enough. <laughs> I enjoyed talking to you, Tony, and I hope the listeners enjoyed um, to Tony's story. I think it's very inspiring, and um, we'll catch you around. For Thanks sure. for 100%. listening, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Cheers.